In this video, I'm talking about and showing you my trip to the Kane County Toy Show, one of the biggest toy shows in the world back in April of 2022. Here we go. What's going on? My name is Bernie. I'm a comic book writer and artist. And in these videos, I like to talk about toys, comics, TV shows, movies that have inspired me in my storytelling, in my collection. And in this video, I'm going to go over my visit, my first visit to the Kane County Toy Show. So if you've never heard of the Kane County Toy Show, it's been around for 49 years, 49 years. I grew up in Chicago. It's probably 45 minutes away from me everywhere I've lived in the city and I've never been. So I thought, you know what? I've got to make 2022 the year where, where I, I, I fix that. I got to correct that problem because I'm a toy lover. I love toys. And this toy show has it all. 600 plus vendors. It, it, it takes forever to walk through these fairgrounds. And uh, luckily, my buddy Dre and me took an entire day to go and it was a hell of a good time so we i got some footage um got some pictures got a lot of videos that i assembled all together so i hope you kind of uh enjoy the walk through through kane county toy show and i'm going to just provide a little bit of voiceover along the way and highlight a few things that definitely caught my attention and hopefully will catch your attention too so here we go all right so we got there pretty early the show started as early as 8 a.m and we wanted to make sure we were one of the first folks in so by the time we parked here's dre it was about 8.30, pretty early, at least for me, and we're making our way towards the main building. As we walk in, we're just, <laughs> I, I mean, just assaulted by all of these toys, rows and rows of toys. And mind you, this is just the first building. There were, I think, seven, maybe eight buildings filled with vendors. Amazing. And with 600 vendors, you're going to see just about a little bit of everything here are some Marvel Legend figures, some Build-A-Figures. We've got some Harry Potter figures in there as well. A lot of Marvel stuff because obviously people love superheroes, Marvel and DC. But some of these figures are just amazing. The quality, things that I don't collect, but obviously I can see why other people do. And again, you, you see a little bit of everything. Like I said, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, a bunch of Stormtroopers. My first time at the Kane County Toy Show and already a great start. Seeing as how hot the collectibles market has become, and obviously everyone getting a bit of nostalgia, uh, no surprise to see all of these vintage Star Wars toys, some yellowed, some incomplete, doesn't matter. Uh, for folks that are looking to add to their collection to walk down memory lane, try to fill in some of those memories from their toy box, from the toy collections, then obviously you've got everything you can imagine here. I started looking at some of these books because I remember them as a kid where there was a book fair and we would have like a book bus, like a bookmobile that would come to our school. And, you know, once you get past all of the boring books that would try to teach you something, you would have these books about uh, the Transformers and Masters of the Universe and G.I. Joe that were just really cool, especially because the, the artwork was amazing. It reminded me of the artwork that you would see on the packaging for the toys. So when I saw some of these books at the Kane County Toy Show, I just had to flip through some of them. I, I was kind of tempted to pick a few of them up, but I showed some restraint because, well, for me, if I picked one up, I'd have to pick them all up. They also had quite a lot of comics for a toy show. Did not expect that, but loved the surprise because as a comic collector, as a comic book artist, it was great to see some of these books. Certainly, they were out of my price range and Apologize for the glare, but the glare will not hide some of those stickers. Uh, obviously, some of these books, well worth the asking price. They are collectibles. They are milestones. Famous covers. Marvel, DC, Independent, Classic, Modern Day, Near Mint, Dog-Eared, Love Comics. I had to get some footage of these. They are book and record sets that were released in probably the mid-70s to probably the early 80s. They were comics. Batman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, you name it, that also included a record, an actual vinyl record. And the idea was that you could flip through these comic books while playing the record, and the record would have voiceovers, they would have sound effects. So cool. Another great thing about the show, not only did they have toys and comics, they also had games, NES games, games I certainly had growing up. Ghost and Goblins, Super Mario Brothers 2, 
Paperboy classics. Awesome to see them in the wild like this. I think over the last couple of years, just like comics and toys, games, game cartridges are starting to become very collectible. So no surprise to see them at this show. Now, what was a surprise were these awesome mini arcade machines. Frogger, Popeye, Super Mario, Donkey Kong. I remember having at least one of these. It was probably Donkey Kong when I was a kid. And after 40 plus years, it was cool to see that this little Popeye machine was still alive and kicking. I can't get enough of giant robots. Can anyone get enough of giant robots or any any size robots for that matter? Transformers, GoBots, Mazings or Z, even Robbie the Robot. I love them all. And the great thing about this toy show is that I saw a ton of them at the show. It was amazing. Right out of the gate, let's start with Voltron, a cartoon that I watched as a kid in the 80s. You had the five lions, the black lion, the red, the blue, the green, and the yellow. And then more of a modern day giant robot. You have the Megazord from Power Rangers, made up of the Tyrannosaurus, Mastodon, Pterodactyl, Triceratops, and Sabretooth. And now for something a bit more vintage, Shogun Warriors. I always wanted these when I was a kid. You had Mazinger, Raiden, there was also that giant Godzilla, Tetsujin 28, also known as Gigantor, and probably a few that I'm forgetting. Seeing these giant robots was amazing, and the artwork on a lot of the packaging was just stunning. Also stunning were these vintage Transformer toys. Some of them were open, some of them in box, but just so cool to see these guys still intact after all these years. Some more modern day Transformers, and then I just mentioned Voltron before, and these were, well, this was a vintage one here that I saw, but then I saw also what seemed to be some of the re-releases. I'm not 100% sure if they were from the Netflix series, but I saw that it said classic. So my guess is that they were probably re-releases, maybe inspired uh, because of the popularity of the Netflix series. Some of them had Netflix stickers on the packaging here. So either way, if you couldn't afford a vintage Voltron, you could pick up one of the re-releases. Last but not least, we also have GoBots. I gotta show the GoBots some love, right? A lot of vendors had Tupperwares filled with bins of toys, and this specific vendor had a bin filled with TMNT figures. I remember going to Child's World, KB Toy Store, and certainly Toys R Us, going down the aisles, trying to convince my parents to buy some of these. So it was kind of cool to see some of these figures loose, obviously played with, very much enjoyed, incomplete, but doesn't matter, just taking that walk down memory lane. Characters whose names I still remember. Ace Duck, Muckman, Rat King, Casey Jones, Baxter Stockman, obviously the Turtles. Here's a Donatello that's obviously seen a few sewer adventures. And you can't have toy adventures without vehicles. The Channel 6 van, which I think honestly was just a repainted version of the Turtle Mobile. You had Krang in the robot body, and I was very tempted to get those TMNT VHS, but don't have a VCR. You can't have a toy show without having G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And just like I mentioned, some vendors had bins full of toys, and this one felt kind of like a vehicle graveyard for G.I. Joe collectors, where you had a bunch of different vehicles in different states of completion and condition. But if you were missing a piece, if you were missing the glass for a cockpit, maybe that gun turret for the uh, personnel carrier, I definitely wanted that as a kid, didn't have it, maybe some missiles, anything, this was the place to find it. You would see all of these G.I. Joe and Cobra vehicles, planes, tanks, jeeps you know all the cool vehicles that you saw in the cartoon that you would again try to get your parents to buy for you and maybe they wouldn't but you would see it all there cobra his tanks the mobat pretty sure that's the mobat not 100 percent sure but uh that for sure that's the dragonfly and the price tags on some of these were pretty high but there's not a lot of these things out there especially in pretty good condition you know they've probably been played with a lot or missing parts so if you're a toy collector especially if you're a gi joe collector you better come to a show like kane county with money to spend now these were really cool these were the file cards that 
you would find on the back of the G.I. Joe figures. And a lot of them, I think the most of them were probably written by Larry Hama, who worked on the comic series for Marvel in the 80s. And this just gave you a little bit of a sneak peek into the profiles of these characters. I was very tempted to pick a few of these up. In the 90s, you had toy lines based on some PG-13 and even some R-rated movies, including Aliens, Predator, Commando, Demolition Man, I mean, really kind of, kind of weird, uh, Police Academy, Rambo, Robocop, uh, Terminator 2, Toxic Crusaders. So, of course, I had to take some shots of these last action hero toys and vehicles. I actually have quite a few of the Kenner Batman the Animated Series toys. I bought them when the Animated Series was first released on TV. So kind of cool to see these DC Direct figures. I have a few of them, not too many. These are definitely out of my price range, but I'm sure they'll find a good home. If you grew up in the 80s like I did, you probably had a Trapper Keeper filled with Garbage Pail Kids stickers. So if you've never heard of Garbage Pail Kids, they were a parody of Cabbage Patch Dolls. So I didn't have the Cabbage Patch Dolls, but I had a ton of Garbage Pail Kids. Atom Bomb, I mean, just classics. And the fact that you would have these trading cards that were also stickers, just I loved it as, as a kid. Um, so seeing them at the show was awesome because I saw a vendor who had sleeves of the Garbage Pail Kids trading cards and don't get me wrong, I wanted to buy them all. So if you've never actually seen Garbage Pail Kid cards, they had the sticker on them, but each card had two variations. So you had the same picture on each sticker on each card, but you would have a different character name that was a bit of a wordplay, a humorous wordplay like Atom Bomb or Blasted Billy, Nat Splat or Juggling Judd, Flamin' Raymond or Hot Toddy. I know, I know, it sounds ridiculous, but as a kid, I love these cards, and now as an adult, I really appreciate the design. The, the artwork is actually unbelievable, if not a little grotesque. And as I'm winding down this little summary of Kane County, I wanted to share some of the pictures, a little bit of a slideshow of some of the awesome toys that I saw along the way. Again, you can tell by the pictures, I'm a big fan of these giant robots, some that I had as a kid, some that I only wish I had as a kid. Spectre Man, Ultraman, Godzilla, love them all. And that was my first trip to Kane County Toy Show. Won't be my last. I'm definitely going to go back next time they have the show because it was so much fun. I was able to pick up comics. I was able to pick up a few toys. I was able to see so many toys. And again, the nostalgia levels were off the charts. So I'll definitely be going back. But thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the journey. And until next time.